Good morning. It's Jeffrey Christian of CPM Group. It's about 10, 10 uh, in the morning on Friday, the 5th of January here in New York. I want to talk today about the outlook for gold, silver, and platinum group metals in 2024. Welcome to the new year. Before I do that, let's talk about what we were saying a year ago uh, for 2023. On the 6th of January uh, in 2023, we issued our monthly precious metals advisory. In that, we talked about what we expected for 2023. We said no recession in 2023, possibly emerging by the fourth quarter of 2023, but more likely in 2024, 2025. Fiscal policy in the U.S. government would remain stalemated, we said. Uh, wars would continue, Russia in Ukraine, and tensions between Russia, uh, China and the United States, etc. Interest rates would rise, we said, in the first half of 2023, before plateauing. And then we thought that there would be uh, no push uh, by monetary policy of the economy into a recession. Inflation, we said, we thought would moderate, uh, decline at a moderate pace, and the dollar would not collapse, but remain largely in the then current range. In saying these things, we were pretty much in line with what a lot of mainstream economists and central bank economists and others were saying. We were obviously diametrically opposed to the doomsayers and the arm wavers who were saying that, yeah. Uh, we'd have hyper reset, uh, inflation and a recession to rival the Great Depression, and, and the governments would fall and the dollar would collapse. Uh, but I don't mind not being in line with them. We had projections that we published in the Precious Metals Advisory. We published quarterly projections for prices on an eight quarter rolling basis. So the next two years. And in January 2023, we were saying that we thought the price of gold would average a record $1,862. The price had averaged about $1,804 in 2022 and was, I think, around that level uh, in early January of that year. In the end, the price averaged $1,952, so somewhat higher than we had expected a year ago, but in the same direction, higher. Annual volatility was 13.2%. Silver prices, we thought, would average around $24.22 in 2023, and the actual was 23.53. And volatility was much higher, around 26%. Platinum prices, we had projected that they would fall to average around $1,096. They fell even further than we thought, and they averaged $971. Palladium prices, we thought they would fall to $1,700, and they actually fell to $1,300, much more sharply than we thought, with this enormous 40% volatility. And we thought rhodium prices would fall to around $11,000, and they actually collapsed to $6,600. That's what we thought last year. What do we think about this year? Well, we've been saying for some time, and we'll say it again here, and we'll probably say it again in future videos, politics, you know, precious metals prices, gold and silver prices are determined primarily by investment demand, and investment demand is driven primarily by exogenous variables, uh, investors' concerns about economics and political, the environment, uh, the economic and political environment in which investors live and the investors' perceptions of those, and financial market and stability or instability. Um, and what we've been saying for some time is that, you know, usually it's economic and financial issues that drive investment demand in and out, uh, out of gold. But we think that in 2024 and 2025, politics will weigh much more heavily on investor sentiments toward gold and silver, and thus prices. We think that economics will probably take a back seat to politics going forward. Politics also may disrupt economic activities and financial markets, which then could further uh, in incite investors to buy more gold and silver. You have elections and non-elections around the world. 
60% of world GDP comes from countries that will have major elections in 2024. Obviously, the United States is a big one, but you have a variety of other countries where you're going to be seeing elections this year and what we call non-elections, which uh, either are sham elections or changes of government in a non-electoral fashion. International and domestic politics will both matter. Obviously, as I've just been saying, there's a lot of issues related to domestic policies, not only in the United States, but in most other countries of the world. You have a stalemated government in the United States that will probably continue. It's going to be an election year. It will be a nasty election year. It already is a nasty election year. Uh, and that's going to weigh heavily. The Russian invasion of Ukraine will continue onward. You know, the United States and NATO could end it within a week or a month, uh, but they won't. Um, it's just going to continue. You now have a Middle Eastern war, Israel versus Hamas, and that runs the risk of spreading into bigger areas. The Iranians are trying to provoke the Americans. The Americans are trying to provoke the Iranians. ISIS said, hey, don't count us out and staged a massive terrorist attack within Iran um, earlier this week. International events and politics are going to continue to be a problem. Tensions over Taiwan between China and the United States will continue, um, and it's all going to create this uncertainty and nervousness on the part of investors which should stimulate increased investment demand for gold and silver. Economically, we have been saying for several years that we thought a recession was likely to emerge in 2024, 2025. We still think that. We think the recession, we had been expecting a much more severe recession, but given the inherent strengths that we've seen in the U.S. economy and on the global uh, economic uh, level, we think that the recession that is headed this way may be later and maybe more shallow and shorter than the one that we have been expecting for some time. But we do think that there is a recession coming. U.S. government will remain stalemated. Interest rates will remain high, if you want to call five and a quarter percent high, until significant economic weakening clearly emerges. That's very important. There are a lot of people who are hoping for lower interest rates, but lower interest rates will only come when there is a significant, obvious, clear weakening in economic conditions. So be careful what you hope for. Possibly we could start seeing some decline in interest rates, possibly as early as March or May, maybe June, some people are thinking in the second half of the year. You've had those hopefuls saying, oh, well, we think there's going to be six sharp, you know, six uh, cuts in, in the Fed funds rate over the course of 2024, totaling about one and a half percent. The Fed has said they expect three to make three, totaling about 75 basis points. Um, two or three, I think, seems most likely. So be careful what you hope for. And be aware that interest rates will only decline when economic conditions worsen. And we do think that they will worsen. Inflation will decline at a moderate pace. The decline will be slower than it has been over the last 18 months. And if you look at most recent uh, declines in, in inflation in the United States and Europe and Japan and in other countries, a big chunk of the decline has been lower energy prices, specifically petroleum products and natural gas. That may be behind the market. You may not see lower energy prices dragging headline inflation lower over the next year or so. And in fact, higher energy prices could halt the declines and even lead to slightly higher inflation. You've seen slightly higher inflation numbers coming in in Germany, the EU, and the UK over the past month, uh, and that's possible. We don't see a sharp increase 
in in overall inflation, but we might see that the declines halt and you start seeing some modest increase. We're not looking at 9% inflation. Uh, we're looking at 4 or 5% inflation in terms of U.S. CPI. Dollar is not going to collapse. It probably will remain at or above recent levels. And we're really worried about the unforeseen consequences of financial and other regulations. And you're already seeing that across the political and economic spectrum as various regulations kick into place, not only in the United States, but in the United, uh, United Kingdom and, and, and European Union, you're starting to see the, uh, these new regulations cause uh, less efficient financial market operations, which could contribute to recessionary conditions later. People often ask us what will be uh, what will cause the next recession, and we point out that recessions are caused by a variety of factors coming together all at once. There's maybe one or two that are the occasion that actually triggers that lower uh, economic activity, uh, but it's usually a, a variety of factors. And the unforeseen consequences of financial and other regulations could factor in there. Now, you can see our view last year was no recession, lower inflation, stronger economy. And there were a lot of people who were saying, no, we're going to have a recession in 2023 and inflation is going to rise. Now you have a consensus that says, well, maybe we won't see a recession. And CPM Group is saying, well, we do think that a recession is likely to emerge at some point over the next two years. It's not that we like being contrarians, it's that we look at the economic and political and financial market data, and we make projections based on that. We have lower economic growth in the United States and in a number of other countries projected for this year relative or compared to 2023, and that reflects the idea that at least in the developed economies, the United States, Japan, parts of Europe, you could see a recession this year. So what's all that mean for precious metals? We think that gold prices will rise around 5% more to a new record closer to $2,050 than the levels that we saw this year. We think that in the gold market, you're going to see a significant increase in investment demand. Central banks bought about 13 million ounces last year. Uh, there, our, our projection is that they'll buy about 9 million ounces, so down somewhat. That reflects our view that investors will significantly increase their investment demand and take it over a threshold level. If we saw 25 million ounces of investment demand in 2023, CPM Group would not be surprised to see more than 30 million ounces of net investor buying of physical gold in 2024. And that would probably be significant enough to push prices up another $100 on average and discourage central banks from buying as much gold because central banks tend to be more price sensitive. They like to buy gold when the price is down because investors aren't buying it. When investors are buying outsized volumes of gold and push the price higher, central banks tend to pull back. So that's what we're looking at for gold. We think silver is going to remain roughly flat, maybe average around $23.70, you know, up slightly, I guess, from, from last year. We're looking at some increase in investment demand but not that significant of an increase in, in, in investment demand for silver compared to gold. We're continuing to see disenchanted investors selling silver. We're start continuing or we're starting to see investors selling some silver in order to raise cash for living expenses. And we think that those trends will continue to be headwinds on the silver price. Now, we do think that silver prices will rise sharply, but we think that the increase in silver prices will be really emerging in the fourth quarter of 2024 and into 2025. 
whereas we think that the gold price, which is already at record levels, will be stronger throughout 2024 into 2025. Our expectation is that platinum prices will continue to decline, but only slightly to around $950 uh, this year. Palladium, we're looking for a more pronounced decline to something below $1,000. And rhodium, we also expect to decline sharply. In, K, in the terms of platinum, palladium, rhodium, we have, as I said in our last 2023 video, we just updated our projections for supply, demand, and price for these three metals to 2050. And the theme is that for the last 50 years, platinum, palladium, rhodium have had strong price performance for much of that period, the, that half century, due to the growth and use of these metals in automotive catalytic converters to reduce and oxidize harmful emissions from vehicles and other petroleum burning uh, sources. We think the next 25 to 50 years will be characterized as reduced PGM demand, not complete elimination. 25 years from now, we still, still think that the major source of energy for humankind will be petroleum products. The second largest source will be natural gas. So you're going to continue to use platinum, palladium, and rhodium to clean up those harmful emissions, but you may be using less as other vehicles such as electric vehicles or maybe even hydrogen engines come along, not fuel cells, hydrogen engines or electric vehicles. And that will reduce the amount of metal in total that the automotive industry is using. We mentioned at the end of last year some future video topics. We still continue plan to do this. Obviously, market conditions will warrant when we can talk about these kinds of issues versus what's going on in the market. You'll notice I didn't even mention the jobs report today, which was stronger than the market consensus uh, and um, suggests a stronger economic uh, environment than a lot of people thought. But we did talk about the six key questions to quantifiably address before deciding whether or not to invest in precious metals and commodities. We do hope to talk about that in a soon video, uh, in a video soon, on an overview basis, and then look at those six key issues uh, in individual videos as the year progresses. We'll talk about silver use in solar panels. Try to clear the air because there's a lot of very bullish, inaccurate information that's being put out to investors about the use of silver in solar panels. Silver use in solar panels is rising. It's rising significantly, but it's not rising to unrealistic levels that some silver promoters would have. We we'll also talk about above ground silver use, uh, silver inventories, sorry, not use, but inventories. Uh, they're at record levels, 5.5 billion ounces. We'll explain that, and we'll probably also have to delve into the where the bad statistics and the worst analysis of this comes from. Uh, it's a topic that we don't particularly like to talk about in public, uh, but I think that in order for our investors and others to really understand above-ground inventories, they really have to understand where the bad data and where the bad analyses come from. Talk about these long-term shifts in PGM markets that I already talked about, and we'll talk about central bank gold. And I'm sure there'll be a variety of other topics that will come up. Over the course of 2024, we will have our first client open forum on February 1st this year. We will have our Silver Facts and Fantasies webinar on February 28th. That's open to the public and not just clients. We will have our PDAC Silver Reception. It will be our 20th annual year of having a Silver Reception at the start of the Prospectors and Developers Association of Canada Annual Convention in Toronto. We'll launch our Gold Yearbook uh, on the 26th of March, Silver Yearbook 14th of May, Platinum Group Metals Yearbook on the 16th of July. All of those can be pre-ordered today at cpmgroup.com 
slash store, our, our online store. And we're talking about creating a silver seminar tentatively in late October, tentatively in Spokane. There are several producers and other organizations that are encouraging us to do this. And we think that the time is right to probably have a <clears throat> true silver seminar. Uh, and, and so everything being equal, we'll try to organize that late in the year. You can always go to our website, get a lot of free reads, see old videos, see current videos, see current reports that we produce at no charge and order reports and send information, uh, uh, email to our info at cpmgroup.com saying, I'd like to be your client. Let's talk about what you can do for me to help me um, either protect myself from the vagaries of precious metals price moves or take advantage of those price moves. We do both. Thanks. In the meantime, take care of yourself. We'll talk to you next week. Be good to yourself. Be good to people around you and try to do something good for the world because this is going to be a pretty wild year. Let's just say that. Take care.